Victoria Avia. Red Queen follows Mare Burrow. She lives in a world where the colour of your blood determines everything about your life. The Reds are commoners. They do all the work, all the hard labour for the country and they're just like the average class citizen. So they have red blood and they're just average humans. The Reds live in the worst conditions. They're like peasants and they're filthy all the time because they're not given any luxuries of life and they can never be anything more than a red and they can never live any better because of the colour of their blood. The Silvers on the other hand are the elite nobility. They live lives of luxury and they have an abundance of wealth. They can buy anything they want and they live really great lives. They also happen to have superpowers because of their silver blood. So there are a variety of powers that they have like the average ones. So there's telekinesis, there's water control, there's plant control, there's um, control over metal, there's teleportation, and it's pretty much just like every superpower you can ever think of, they have it in this world, and it's really, really cool. They all use these superpowers in their daily lives, and because of their superpowers, they regard themselves to be higher than the Reds, so that's why there's like this inequality between everybody, because the Silvers have all these like godlike powers, so they are treated as the kings and the queens. And then one day, bam! Mare finds herself in between the world of the Silvers, and she's just a red. She's never lived a life of luxury, and all of a sudden she has to pretend to be Silver because she has this crazy magical power, which I'm not going to tell you because you have to read it to find out, but she's red by blood and Silver by nature. She has superpowers like the Silvers, and it's like crazy, so she has to act like a Silver because nobody can know that she's really a red. It is so interesting and I recommend everyone pick this up. Anybody who loves fantasy and um, paranormal elements like superpowers, it is so good and I love this book so much. So if you haven't read Red Queen then I'm sorry to say but it's time for you to go now because I'm going to get into the spoilery stuff and I really don't want to spoil you for this book because it is well worth the read. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye! Hey everyone who's Red Red Queen. So, Mare. Let's start with Mare because she's our main character. I loved Mare's character because she was so real and genuine and relatable. She didn't give up her life for a boy and she didn't change because of a boy. She stayed strong to her core beliefs and she still loved her family. She was still very loyal to her family even though she had to pretend to be Silver and you know live in the courts with all these silvers and she just hated it there. Reading her internal conflict about herself was just really really heartbreaking because she's always lived in the shadow of her sister Gisa and even though her sister's younger she's always been more talented. Mare's always been a thief and she's never really been good at very much and she probably will never live a really great life back in the stilts and she was just always feeling like she wasn't good enough because she was in the shadow of her sister. She's strong-willed and powerful and sassy and I just loved the little comments she had on everything. It just made such a bleak situation just that little bit better because there was all these like funny moments which I really loved. But when she was training with Julian or when she pretty much first met Julian and she and he told her to like use his power to shoot at the bookcase and she completely destroyed it, like demolished it completely and then she's like, I think you need a new bookcase or something like that. Sorry about the bookcase and I just like burst out laughing, it was hilarious and then Julian's like, I think we need a bigger classroom which is so true because Mare's just like got this uncontrollable electricity just firing out of her arms and she can't control it at the start because it's so crazy and so new and unpredictable. This book is getting heavy so I'm going to put it down. I loved those parts of Mare where she was just showing her personality and just everything. I just really really liked Mare. She was such a great character. So on a complete change of note, let's talk about Evangeline. The girl who epitomizes everything I hate in a person, pretty much, she is just like my enemy. Like, I could not stand being around Evangeline, and I don't know how everyone kept it up for so long. Even Cal thought she was awful, and nobody really liked her apart from her own family and her brother Ptolemus, but what kind of a name is Ptolemus anyway? But I was like, yes, yes, Mare, when she fell through the lightning shield and 
Evangeline was like trying to show off all her powers with her metal bending and then just Mare appears out of the sky, a red, and she's just like, nah, -uh, are you doing this? I'm going to take you down, Evangeline. And that was just so hilarious because I was just, I just love seeing Mare just flourish with this electricity in her hands and she was like, what is this? And then she just demolished Evangeline and I was just like so annoyed at Evangeline's arrogance throughout the whole book because it was just so irritating. I just wanted to slap her, like slap her right in the face because she was just pissing me off so much and ah, I just, she was that really annoying character and she just, I just wish she would go back to her house and just stay there because she was really irritating. I have to say I wasn't really that shocked by the ending and I know that's probably going to come to a surprise to most of you that have read the book and realized like the big betrayal, the big shock of Maven and not being on Mare's side but I wasn't really that shocked by it and I don't really know why because I'm usually the worst at picking up on clues. Like I usually don't even see what's like blatantly put in front of me in a book until it happens and I was kind of shocked that I was guessing this along the way like I was like Maven always seemed a bit iffy to me at the start when Mare was describing him she always was described as really cold and like ferocious and really like weird like he was hiding himself and I kind of kept up that throughout the whole book even though he started to change and become nicer to Mare because he wanted to like drag her in I still saw him in this kind of like shadowy light like almost like he was being fake which he was but Mare kept stating anyone can betray anyone and so I was like not trusting of any character in the book because I was like you're probably going to betray me, you're not even going to be, you're not even going to like Mare and I was just like is Mare going to betray us, is she going to like join the Silvers and like advocate them and just her mind go crazy or something like that and I was just, I was ready for a shocking betrayal and so maybe that's why I didn't really feel that shocked by the ending because I was like anyone can betray anyone comes up about like 10 billion times in the book and I was like this has to mean something so I wasn't really that shocked but let me know if you were shocked because I know pretty much every other review that I've seen has been like oh my god I did not see the ending coming but I don't know I just I was not shocked by it I was more shocked about Shade being alive which I was I was like you have to be alive you have to be alive and, and when um, she said that he was dead and she went back to his house she went back to her family's house with Cal, I was like, no, oh, Shade, because I loved Shade, and even though we had never met him, I loved his character, and when she said that he was dead, and I was like, ah, because I loved Shade, and then he just appears at the end on the train with, like, teleportation, and he's just like, mm, I got this down, Mare, you spent so long trying to train your lightning stuff, and he's just, like, teleporting everywhere, and... I just, I loved him. I loved Shade so much. The part when Cal had to kill his father, even though it was the queen in his head, it was so heartbreaking to read. And everything after that, when he still blamed himself for the death of his father, that was just completely heartbreaking because he still blamed it on himself. Even though it was Alara in his brain controlling his body, he was still the one. He was still the body that killed his father. And that was just so, so heartbreaking to read because I just felt so much for Cal. And at the start, when we didn't know it was Cal in the stilts in the bar when she was, when Mare was pickpocketing him, I just loved that Cal. And when she got back to the um, castle and she was like, she had to pretend when she was betrothed to Maven. He just started to become like a soldier and oh, I just, it's weird how I never really liked any of the love interests. Like I liked Maven at times, but Cal was always like, like he cared too much about his guard job and he wasn't really seeing the impact he was having on killing all these reds. And yeah, I just, I don't know who, like, even though Maven was, like, really corrupt, and if you forget about the ending, I still don't know who I would pick for Mare. Like, I just, neither of them seemed really the option. Like, if Cal changes back to that guy he was in the bar, I would love that, because I loved that guy in the bar, and I was like, I'm gonna see you around, man. I'm gonna see you around. And so... When I saw him, when he was Cal, he was the prince, I was like, yes, we get to be with him. And then he was like, all like, 
about to be a king and everything. But I really hope in the next books that Cal kind of develops as a character and I really wouldn't mind if Cal and Mare teamed up to kill Maven because that son of a biatch should die because he just betrayed Mare so much, he betrayed everyone and he just joined up with the Queen who I hate as well and I'm just not even going to get into the Queen because she was just so irritating. Throughout the whole book I just hated the Queen. Also Kalorn, I was just thinking about it that I I don't even know what to, how to describe my feelings to him. I, I don't know. Like, I liked him at the start, like when it was just Mare in the stilts and I liked their kind of playful relationship and it always seemed like they were going to be together and get married. Like that was kind of just a given, but I, I don't even know my feelings for him anymore because I'm high, I just, I don't know. But on the other note, Lucas, man, Lucas was like such a good god. I loved Lucas so much, even though he only appeared a few times throughout the book. He was just the sassiest. And when Mare first met him and he was like waiting outside her room, that part was just hilarious. Lucas is like, one minute behind schedule. Are you gonna babysit me every day or just until I learn my way around? What do you think? Here's to a long and happy friendship, Officer Samus. Likewise, my lady. Don't call me that. Whatever you say, milady, and just like their relationship was always just so sad. When he was killed in the end, oh, I just, just, I was like, no, Lucas. I just, I wanted him to live because he was such a good character, and even though he only appeared a few times, I loved Lucas, and I, I didn't want him to die. And when he died, I was like, no oh, way. So let's get onto the world because I feel like I've been talking about characters for so long, but the characters are one of my favorite parts of this story because. They bring so much life to it and so much interest. The world was so amazing. I loved reading about this world. I don't know, I don't think I've ever read a book so unique in its setting. And that's really hard to these days with like dystopian books. It's really hard to create a new world. But this is kind of like a dystopian fantasy almost. Because it's not really Earth, but there are so many things that are like it to Earth. All that's different is the colour of their blood. And... It's shown to us by Mare that even Reds can have superpowers too, so maybe the Reds, it maybe even the colour of the blood isn't important, maybe all Reds have superpowers or this little gene in them, but they just haven't been able to explore it because the Silvers are brought up to embrace their hidden talents, but Mare never realised her talent until she fell through the electricity like thinger in the arena and she was like brought to life almost by it but I don't maybe that's maybe their world is just suppressing their power I don't know I have to say I really really enjoyed Red Queen like it was probably one of the, my favorite books I've read this year so far but the one thing that kind of brought it down from a five star book was just its similarity and relatedness to other books and I'm just saying this from my point of view, so maybe not everyone will agree with me, but I just found a lot of elements quite similar, and I don't even know why, because this world is so unique, the characters are unique, I just, I felt like elements of it were just a little bit too similar for my liking, but I tried, I try to treat every book as its own, so I'm not going to be like going into which books I thought it was like, because... I don't know, it was just the vibe that was similar, not really any elements of the book. But I don't think that ruined the book at all because I don't think the author's intention was to copy any books at all. But that's just kind of what brought it down for me. I would still definitely give it four and a half stars out of five. I loved this book. That's just kind of what brought it down off the edge of being perfect. But these are just even small things. Like, the book was amazing in itself. So this concludes my book talk and slash review of the amazing book Red Queen by Victoria Aviard. I hope you guys enjoyed this little book talk and make sure to leave your comments and opinions in the comments box below because I love reading what you guys have to say about books. I love discussing books and I don't know, I just, I just want to hear your thoughts. So make sure to leave them in the comments below. And I'll see you guys in my next video. We will rise red as the dawn. I wrote a song today, not all the words hey everyone, today I'm going to be sharing with you my favourite Wattpad novels. If you don't know what Wattpad is, it's 